warm welcome to all TVET lecturers. I'm Amanda Skinner from Macmillan. I'm going to introduce you to all the recent updates to the Fluid Mechanics N5 curriculum. The previous curriculum dates back to 1990 and a revision has been long due. The updated curriculum will be implemented in September 2024 and there are several changes to the syllabus that you should be aware of. You will need the latest textbooks to teach the correct content and help students do their best. Later in this video, I will explain how our brand new TVET First Students Book, Lecturer's Guide and Workbook will help you implement the revised curriculum easily and confidently. The books are approved by the Department of Higher Education and Training, so you can be confident that all the curriculum requirements have been met in full. The logo, Revised Curriculum 2024, tells you that these are the correct books. But first, let's go through the curriculum itself. What has changed in the Fluid Mechanics curriculum? The whole syllabus for Fluid Mechanics N5 has been reworked and updated. The most notable change is the new Topic 11 on reciprocating pumps. Let's go through all the main changes. In Topic 1, physical properties now also include specific weight, as well as the inside diameter of a droplet. However, pressure, temperature and vapour pressure are no longer in the curriculum and neither is the former section 7.3 on fluid systems and practical examples of hydraulic systems. In topic 2, the concept of pressure and proof of Pascal's principle are no longer included. Calculation specifics no longer include pressure at a point, difference in pressure or absolute pressure. What has been added are the drawings of and calculations for five types of pressure measurement instruments. Topic 3 closely matches section 7.6 in the old syllabus and now also includes mechanical advantage as a concept of power transfer. The distortion of hydraulic components is new. Also new are calculations for rotating shafts or pistons. In topic 4, which links to the former section 7.7, .7, pressure distribution diagrams have been taken out. The required simple geometric and curved surfaces have been specified more closely. Calculations involving a sluice gate are new. Whereas the old syllabus specified applying the Archimedes principle to practical problems, the new topic 5 merely requires that the principle be described. The new outcome deals with calculations of the buoyancy of different shapes. In the new topic 6, round pipes no longer need to have branches when doing calculations. Also removed are the calculations of the energy conservation of flowing fluids, as well as energy loss and hydraulic power calculations. Topic 7 links up with the former section 7.9. However, the manometer has been added in and venturi tubes and nozzles have been taken out. Small orifices are dealt with in the new section 9.1 and rotometers in section 6.1.2. Calculations of power transmission in hydraulic systems are no longer required in Topic 8. Friction loss in viscous flow using Poiseuille's equation has also been removed, along with the condition of maximum power transmission and shock loss expressed in terms of dynamic head. Several shock losses to be calculated are identified. Equivalent length and equivalent ratios need to be calculated specifically for open and closed tanks. The former section 7.9 called for calculations and explanations of small orifices as an introduction to flow coefficient. These are now specified in detail in topic 9 in the new syllabus. The new topic 10 no longer includes the following. Calculations and descriptions of the conservation of fluid momentum, Newton's second law applied to fluid flow, reaction of a jet, and the impact of a jet on a curved surface. Flat surfaces are now specified as stationary and moving plates. You mentioned a new topic 11. That is correct. Since hydraulic machinery includes turbines, compressors and pumps, the final learning outcome in the old curriculum, which was called Principles Applied to Hydraulic Turbo Machinery, might well have led to the creation of topic 11, which deals with reciprocating pumps. The heads, diagrams and calculations required are specified in detail. 
What is the weighting of the 11 topics? The old curriculum gave no indication of weighting. In the 2024 syllabus, the weighting of the two main sections are shown on the screen now. Has the format of the exams changed? The exam still consists of a three-hour paper of 100 marks, with a formula sheet attached to the paper. Scientific calculators are allowed, but students may not bring programmable calculators, references or previous examination papers or memoranda. Cell phones and smartwatches are also not allowed in the exam room. How do we keep track of all the changes in the new curriculum? That is where the TVET First textbooks can assist you. The student's book offers everything students need to succeed in the course. Fully worked examples and calculations allow students to master the problem-solving process. Language support enables students to grasp new concepts and terminology. Clear explanations help students to understand the content and correct misconceptions. Detailed diagrams help students to visualize real-life applications. Varied activities encourage lots of practice with exam-type questions. Summaries at the end of every module make revision easier. Summative assessments test the student's exam readiness. There is also a workbook with space for writing the answers to the activities in the student's book. What support does TVET First offer lecturers? The lecturer's guide contains comprehensive answers to all the activities in the student's book. There is also a 10-week suggested teaching plan and a free two-page lesson plan template that you may photocopy as many times as you need. There are also helpful links to relevant videos and online materials, as well as a realistic practice exam and full memorandum. For the best results, use TVET First Fluid Mechanics. We wish you a happy and fruitful teaching year.